today we're back on the dyno with this awesome V12 LS and Matt is going to give us a bit more information about what we're doing today. Oh yeah, today we're just here with uh, Motec Engine Management actually setting up a calibration for our 750 horse crate motor and it's heading over to the States for SEMA on Monday. Yeah, yeah, and it's going to go in a little lightweight car here, something yeah. pretty cool. Factory 5 Racing uh, purchased this bad boy and they're putting it in a chassis that they're showing off at SEMA for launching their new car. Yeah. And I've seen what they're launching. It is amazing what yeah. they're doing. They're definitely, you know, they're the company that started off with um, Cobra kit cars. Yeah. I don't know if you're yeah. familiar with those. Pretty cool things and they've just, you know, keep going up. So this is a, sort of a supercar type thing. Tell us the difference between this engine and the one we filmed three or four years ago. Oh wow, yeah, you um, you came to film our prototype three yep. or four years ago, um, back when we were cutting blocks and things. Mm. This is our turnkey 750 horsepower package. It's uh, obviously one piece, full cast. Uh, this is a cast iron block. We've got LS7 style cast heads with really big, nice ports in it. We're actually still running that same cam profile yep. as the original prototype engine. It just works really, really well for a street engine. It's about as much as you're going to flow um, cam and air through one of these intakes yeah. and one of these throttle bodies anyway. So this is sort of where we found is the sweet spot. Around seven, 750 horsepower in a street car means you can still run sort of normal clutches, normal yeah. fuel pumps, and you've got basically lower horsepower yeah. with no forced induction and it's there instantly, the torque curves. Just, I was going to say, you've got 600 pounds everywhere. Yeah, yeah everywhere, range, right under it. Yeah. We, we actually, one of the, another diner we were at, the guy thought we'd broken his diner. He's like, why is the curve like this? Yeah. It's too flat. It shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, you know, which speaks a lot to these. And when you drive one of these in a car, it's really obvious. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, people talk about you know, superchargers with the instant. It kind of is like that, but it's, it's even more so. so yeah. It's just yeah. flat. You just, as soon as you get on it, you can roast the tyres and, and you're gone. It's a lot yeah. of fun. There's so yeah. much fun to drive. Yeah. Now, internally, what's the difference? Are we still at the same? I think the last engine was around 520. Um, yeah, so we're 519. Uh, this is right up to uh, nine and a half litres, okay. so 580 cubic inches. Yeah, nice. We do that by going big 4.125 inch bore. That's the standard LSX size bore. We like to keep these engines snappy and revvy, mm. and you really don't need any more capacity mm. than that. So we keep with the 3.622 inch stroke. So it's standard LS stroke with the big LSX, LS7 style bore uh, with the big heads. It makes for an engine that just, um, as soon as you touch the throttle, it's really, really zippy. I, I think they actually sound a bit like a sport bike. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of strange. They sound like a sport bike, at nine and a half liters. It's you know, if you had a CBR with nine and a half liters, that's kind of what they're like. Um, and yeah, it just blows people's minds when yeah. you when you're in a car next to someone or you roll into a show. That's one of the most yeah. fun things. Now that we've got a few of these engines out, when you cruise into a show, people are all listening and they can't figure out what it is. So you've basically got the cubes and torque of a small of a big block. Sorry. Yeah. But she revs or more like even a, than some big blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she revs like a small block yeah. almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. We had this on the dyno earlier, and your 750 uh, prediction was basically spot on. All right, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I think we're... Okay, so I'm looking at some numbers now. Yeah, 751, uh, and that's with uh, sort of the safe street tune. So I took a couple of degrees out of it, make sure there's... Uh, we've got knock sensors, obviously, but there's no, you know, no chance of detonation. You don't know what type of fuel you're going to get at a petrol station. So if you want a, a car that you can, you know, not have to think about and worry about and baby like a race engine to still be able to have 750 horsepower and naturally aspirated. Um, that's really how we tune them. So normally get up a little bit more and then back it down to yeah, the, yeah. where we rate them at. We definitely don't want to rate high and then have someone yeah, only yeah. have 650 in their car. Looking at that readout on the dyno, you're basically making 600 foot pounds everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's why they're so fun. Uh, you haven't been in a car with one? No, I haven't. I you haven't. didn't go in the van? When we no, the van? I, I didn't. I was going to, and, and then Shane <laughs> pulled it out before I... He did. Before <laughs> I got a ride. <laughs> yeah, the Kia van was pretty cool. Look, even in that, you could yeah. feel the torque curve, but when you get in a lightweight car, it's just always there. There's just this huge, you know, push of torque. Yeah. And they're just fun. They're just really, really fun. And she idles under 900 RPM. Yep. Like I mean, look, so I go, yeah, 220, um, 227 cans. And then you got the benefits of the drive-by wire 
GM factory GM throttle body. Yep, super simple. We're actually really surprised. I think it's getting really close to the limit, but we were pretty surprised that we could get this level of horsepower out of this stock NA. I know a lot of guys will swap these over for 102s yeah, right, right. at 450 horsepower. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. to make 750 through a stock uh, drive-by-wire, um, yeah, it's, it's quite impressive. We're seeing right at the end the vacuum, there is a little bit of, you know, it's not quite atmosphere in the intake. But, but just right at the top. So, yeah, I think, look, from our perspective, this will be the limit for this package. Um, for the the others, try to shoot for more like a 1,000, we'll have to do a bigger intake and maybe either a yeah. dual or a triple quad. So going forward, you were saying earlier you'd like to do a high comp engine and maybe run on a better fuel like E85. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. Given what this makes, it seems like there's a fair bit more potential. Oh, definitely. I mean, this is basically like a stock engine with a bit of a can. This is basically your entry level. Yeah, um, and this is our entry level. Engine, exactly, it? Yeah, it is yeah. exactly our entry level. So, um, Brett, who does all, all our machine work and assembly at BNR, we used him for a while, and he's really, really talented engine builder. And what you know, Brett's sort of been honest is like, you know how much power you could make from this platform, yeah. which is really why we did it. We did it for the platform. We didn't, you know, and, and to be different and to yeah. offer something different. So, um, yeah, so Brett's, Brett's wants to get it. We've already got a big cam done um, and he's, he's sort of talked us into doing a high comp yeah. and uh, E85, maybe some methanol as well. These pipes sound awesome. They do. Yeah. So yeah. You, these were actually done in the States, yeah? They were. Um, GP headers did these for PRI two years ago, and I've had them in a container on its way from America for a few months. I've been dying to get them out, and we just got them out, and we just threw them on. And this is the first time I've heard them at full song. Yeah, yeah. And oh, they're amazing. They, 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 I don't know. They, I like looking at them. It's just the welds. It's pretty good work. Yeah, I mean, nice, yeah. I can't weld that well. I was thinking earlier you could flip them around and just have two, like, Dinner plate turbos at the we front. We could. Yeah. What size turbo <laughs> would we do? It would be pretty awesome. We could. We got the iron block. I think the iron block would be good for turbos. I'd, yeah, it would I've, be. I've been wanting to do that for a while. Josh Robinson, um, yeah. Formula Drift Pro 2 driver, um, is doing one with some Magnusons. So I, I'll see I, how that goes. I heard a few whispers yeah. about that. Yeah, that'll be yeah. really cool to see. Well, let's um, let's get in the engine room there and um, turn it up. Yep, we'll finish her up and get her off. Mark, something a bit different today. Uh, I've filmed this a few times, but um, is this the first time you've heard one of these on the dyno? On the dyno, yeah. yeah. We had this fired up at the office the other day when the like, the, the, the background is, is I've been following this for ages yeah. and it was always one of those things of like, oh, I've got to get my hands on one of those. And when the boys sort of gave us a call, I thought, oh, right, here's my opportunity. Yeah. And sort of between all of us, we sort of dived in and yeah, now it's on the dyno. So this is the first time I've had a had a chance to really dive into one in anger mm -hmm. um, and go through the tune and, and all that and a pretty impressive bit of gear. Yeah, it's come a long way. I mean, I, I think I filmed an on the engine dyno, what, probably three, four years ago now? I think so. They've been around yeah. for a while, yeah. like the, the first one where they welded the blocks together, I believe. Yeah, now this yep. is one-piece block, one-piece cylinder heads. Yep. Uh, it sounds so much angrier than the last engine. This one's a bit different. It's running some MoTeC here. Do you want to go into a yes. bit, bit of detail with that? So we've chosen the M150 ag again that 
hopefully viewers are familiar with to run this for the simple fact that it has enough in ignition and injector outputs to run this full sequential. So 12 injectors, 12 ignition, all independently controlled. So basically you're firing the 12 cylinders as if they're their own single cylinder engine. You just simply join them all together. So yeah, that was one of the benefits that the boys were looking for. Um, so that's why they came to us. And if it, I haven't really heard the other setup, but like if it sounds better, everyone seems to think it is, mm. well, that's all good. It definitely does. Now, yep. unlike sort of some high powered, I guess, eight cylinder Alice as I've filmed, they yep. certainly don't run a factory jam throttle body and idle at eight to 900 RPM, do they? No, I mean, it's, the, the cam's nice and mild in this, which certainly helps, but you've got this, obviously this big, this big plenum. So one of the things we wanted to make sure of is that it would start and run and idle sort of like a, maybe not a stock one, but at least a, as good as any of the eight cylinder ones you've yeah, done. Yeah. And I, I think it sort of probably idles a little bit better with you, with the number of cylinder firings. Um, and with the fly-by-wire throttle, which is obviously my favorite, and the way we primarily control the RPM with the ignition timing. So the ignition timing is what keeps the, the engine speed in check most of all, and we use the throttle body as a bit of a backup. So I can actually mess around with where the throttle body is to get my base timing roughly where I want as well. So you can sort of rob Peter to pay Paul sort of yeah. thing. Speaking of this throttle body, how are we going in terms of, is that a restriction? Because I don't think I've seen one make that sort of power I, this I, size. I reckon if you went up in throttle body size, you might see a little bit more like right in the top end. Because yeah. we're revving this thing to seven grand, mm. it's right at the top, it seems to drop down and, and you lose a bit of pressure. So you're not quite at atmospheric pressure in the intake manifold. So that does point to a restriction. Now, yeah, that's, that's sort of probably on the verge of that 90 millimeter throttle body. So obviously with the turbo stuff, you're not really worried about it. No, but on no. naturally aspirated, it might it be interesting to change over. Having said that, I have seen people change from that throttle body to the next size up for the same reason and, and it makes zero yeah, difference. Yeah, so have I, yeah. Because there's a lot of mm. other stuff inside the engine going on. And that, as you touched on, it's, it. got, it's got quite a mild camshaft. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it idles quite nicely. Mm. It's not a huge one. And Super smooth. Yeah. Like it doesn't, you know, some engines, they sound like you're like, oh, that's... It, it, it's not it, lumpy it, at idle, which it is... It sounds like it's happy to keep doing it. Yeah. yeah. The um, yeah. the big difference with doing primarily ignition control on these type of engines is even when you get big camshafts, because you're, it's a more instantaneous control of how much power you're making, you can get engines that would have previously idled at like 1100 revs, you get them down under 1000, under 900 revs, no problem. We've proved that a million times with some of the big engines overseas running the M1, um, as opposed to even the M800. So that style of ignition control does make a big difference to the idle. Okay. Yep. The other good thing is because we've got the two Lambda sensors on this engine, when we decided right at the end to turn on the closed loop, uh, that's the closed loop lambda, we can actually divide the engine in two and simply control one bank independently of the other. So with all of these, and I've seen it too with the LSs, even the eight cylinder ones, obviously, you see them at idle and low load, you get a bank to bank imbalance. So I really don't have to worry about that with our, with our M1 and even on the older ECUs because we always do it as a bank thing. So I control this bank based on one sensor and I control that bank on the other sensor. So they're acting independently. Mm -hmm.